Hey everyone, good morning, good evening. Hope all of you are doing well today. I thank all of you for uh, joining us for this session. Uh, this will be scaling successfully through operational strategy, uh, insights for leaders in SaaS and beyond. So I know we only have a short period of time here today, so think of this more like a, uh, a whirlwind tour through the mind of an operator. So uh, forgive me if we go a little fast through a lot of topics, but there's a lot of material to cover, and each one of these could certainly be a, a whole session onto itself. So. Uh, thank you for being here and uh, hope everyone is able to walk away with something uh, new that they can use in their own careers and in their own additional learning paths. So a little bit about me. Um, I have been in a number of startups uh, over my time. Uh, I've joined others startups as well as my own. Uh, so I have a lot of experience in that regard as well as experience on the uh, larger side of the fence, you know, the at ts the IBMs doing a uh, large scale design and uh, systems. So kind of mixing the both uh, worlds together in this presentation for what we might look at when growing teams and growing companies. So let's start in. So operational scalability, you know, when we're looking at companies, we want to ensure that we are growing uh, for success, right? We're not just growing a company to have it last a month or a year or two years. We wanna see it be sustainable. We wanna see it have um, balance. We wanna see it have growth. We wanna see it have happy employees. And there's the need for something to kind of wrap around all the elements of a company uh, to allow it to be successful, to be able to balance other teams, to, uh, you know, quantify the needs for strategic planning and to make decisions that, you know, affect the business in the direction that it intends to go. And, and operations is essentially the team that allows that to happen, you know, looking at all the different factors of an organization and not being dedicated to just one department or another uh, to really allow the business to kind of go forward and to help facilitate um, you know that machine if you think of a business as similar to a car engine right you know operations essentially that that oil that you put in to allow everything to kind of run smoothly and kind of work in between all the other components so everyone can kind of get along and, and move forward um, you know, one thing I like to point out in this part is also that sometimes, you know, people start companies and, and maybe it's their first company, maybe they haven't done it before, maybe they're missing a resource. This is why advisors, you know, fractional talent, you know, other uh, individuals who have this experience who've done this beforehand, it's great to pull people in, listen to conversations like this, you know, call someone up, you know, do an SOW, you know, use the lessons that people have already learned, they've already been through, you know, problems, successes, use that for your own scalability in your own company, partner with others, gain that learnings and work together. And I think that's always been uh, very successful for a lot of companies who do that. So when you're looking at decisions in a company, you know, you have the simplistic way of saying, hey, there's a right way, you know, sunny on the left, wrong way, not so sunny, you know, on the right. Um, but you also have the deciding factor of wanting to move fast, right? Companies these days, they want to scale, they want to grow fast, they want to be out there, they want to beat their competitors. But can you grow fast? and also be sustainable. And that's sort of the uh, the quantity that a lot of companies have come into. And oftentimes, you know, you don't want to be fast, 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 you know, all positive and not consider ramifications. You also don't want to be, you know, no, 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 and be all negative and not actually move forward, which will also not be good for your business. So you have to balance, you know, your decision making with what I consider to be, you know, thoughtful risk management. You know, if I do A, what are the ramifications of A? What's going to happen? Does that bring me closer to my goals for the company? Does that allow me to accomplish our mission? Does it allow us to reach whatever we want to do in six months, a year, and a year and a half? Has it play into the, the larger picture of this enterprise? And that's where we see that operations kind of provides a holistic view, you know, essentially trying to provide for a, a balanced growth in the corporation, looking at the, the needs of the corporation, where we want to go, what we want to do, how teams are operating, you know, how one action is going to affect another action, and then trying to provide uh, advice, counsel, you know, uh, opinions, proof in some cases on, on what happens if we do certain things and what that advice is and what will be the, the net effect. And that's, that's a little different than some of the teams, right? Some teams, you know, you sell, you sell, you, you finance, you finance, and you're able to focus on that one area. Operations, um, you know, for better or worse, is given the ability to float across multiple departments so we can look at things, um, you know, as a, as a spectrum across many different, you know, facilities within an organization and try to make decisions taking into account multiple stakeholders' viewpoints, multiple opinions, multiple potential ramifications, and then using that to make decisions. Uh, it's also very important to realize that sometimes you, you can't always do things the, the exact way you want it to do them. 
Uh, and that's why you, you document. You document the risks. You document your decisions. You create you know a ledger to go back to later, and then you know, hey, we know we need to fix this. We know we need to fix that. We move fast. But we we need to do this to get to that next level. We're going to put it in a project management system. We're going to track it for later on. Um, you have to take those learnings each time and remember them. And that's a, a big sin I see a lot of people do is that you you think of something, you say, hey, I've identified this. I know we need to fix it. We're not going to fix it now. Let's move on. Let's be fast. Let's be aggressive. But you already took the time to identify that risk. You already took the time to know what you need to do to be successful later on. Uh, write it down. Keep it somewhere. Keep keep note of it. Uh, it's going to save you a ton of time as you grow your business. It's also going to allow you to make other decisions faster as you go along. Uh, scaling. You know, we use this word scaling. Scaling, growth. What, what does it mean? You know, we've seen people talk about this at length on LinkedIn and other, you know, media is scaling just growing your company? Do I just want to have a, a lot of bodies in my company? Do I want to have, you know, two, three, four, five hundred people? Does it mean I want to have, you know, the largest ARR, whether or not we're profitable or not? Does it mean I want to be profitable and have really nice finances and be able to show that we are successful and we are a mature business? The company needs to define what that means to them. And there isn't really a right answer and a wrong answer. People can have a different answer for different reasons. What is important is that those in the company who are responsible for that scaling results knows what kind of scaling they're doing. Uh, so they can kind of align on that, right? If they're going towards one particular type, let's all be on the same page. Let's ensure that your leadership team, your managers, your individual contributors all know what they should be doing to reach that goal and they're all working together. And I say that because if not everyone has the same definition of where you want to head, you can create silos, you can create fragmentation, you can lack collaboration, you can create individuals who are doing work that might seem very important to them, but doesn't align with your definition of where the company needs to go. So communication, 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 sharing, ensuring you're all on the same page. It's, it's a very important thing to me. I harp on it a lot in my own conversations. We talk about it a lot in our own company. Uh, it's really necessary to ensure that people, which are the lifeblood of your organization, know what they're doing, are on the same page, and are working together to get there. I think that's something you can keep repeating a thousand times and it probably doesn't get old. Operational strategy in practice. And I like this, I have a little, uh, you know, paintball is always a fun sport. I like playing that. Um, you know, you get out there and you realize, oh wow, you know, I might have the best paintball gun, but um, I'm still getting shot, what's happening? Uh, you know, in practice, it's, it's much different. You have to be able to flow with the punches. You have to be able to understand that things change. You have to be fluid. You have to, you know, understand that things are not to be taken personally. Um, and you also have to plan ahead, you know, because you know these things are gonna happen. So a few things I like to point out uh, specifically is technology. You know, our companies run on apps. We have way more SaaS apps every single year than we could possibly imagine. You know, we are constantly buying new ones, this feature, that feature, AI, this, automation, that, collaboration, this. There's so many apps. Think about your purchases uh, in a strategic fashion. Think about where you're going. You know, what are you actually going to be doing? Are you going to have a sales team of 10 in a year? What kind of CRM do you need? Do you need a heavy one? Do you need a light one? You know, what kind of compliance uh, obligations is your company going to be in? How structured do you need to be? Do you plan to sell in any kind of, you know, federal markets one day? Do you plan to sell internationally? What kind of tooling will you need to support that? You know, will your employees be in one state, two states, one country, 10 countries? All these decisions will allow you to know what kind of technology is best for your company and plan appropriately. It's also good to realize that, you know, the whole time value of money equation, right? We've been learning that, you know, in MBA schools and education for, for decades. But if I can save money in the long term by doing something a little different now, you know, has a balance out for my team, right? Maybe this product costs me a little bit more, but maybe I save six months of my team's time and they're able to deliver a product faster. They're able to gain new clients. They're able to do something else to propel the business forward to their goals. Really important to realize where time is wasted by trying to do things either on the cheap or doing it yourself, or pushing it aside. You know, every time people have to redo work, that costs money and time to the company. Time and money that can be used for getting more clients, for making a better product. So you have to be thoughtful in that decision making. You have to be able to understand where you're going and you have to have a, a strategy for getting there. In addition, it's my feeling that if you follow that methodology, uh, you can make pivots much faster. So business changes, markets change, the world changes, things happen all the time. If you have your house in order and you know what's going on and you have control over all of these items, when you need to make a change, you can shift faster than your competition 
because you know what's going on. You know where the levers are in your company. You know what you can and cannot change. You know why you did things. Uh, you'll be a much more nimble company and be able to react a lot faster. Team. Uh, I talk about teams a lot. You know, without people, all this other stuff doesn't matter, right? You can have the best process, the best technology in the world. You still need people. You're still working together. You're still a team. So what kind of team do you want around you? You know, especially a lot of us, you know, work for, for startups that usually attend some of these events. You know, you want you want people who are flexible, who can be adapting to the changes of a startup life that can align with your mission, that can gain that emotional buy-in. Um, in addition, you want to be upfront with your employees. You want them to know where you're headed. You want them to be knowledgeable about your goals. You want them to understand how they can achieve those goals, how they can be part of that mission, how the work they're doing every day allows them to get closer and closer to where the company needs to go. And then you also need to monitor and adjust the plan, right? You can't just say, hey, we have this mission, we have these goals, and you just let them sit there stale for six months or a year. Things change very fluidly. Monitor them, react, understand what needs to change, and communicate. Um, things can change, but you have to have that communication with it. Commun um, things changing without communication is where we get in trouble. Continuous improvement. I like this one. Um, tend to want things to be perfect all the time, right? We want things to just be automated and simple and documented and all the I's dotted, the T's crossed. Life doesn't always work that way, right? It's uh, through learnings. You know, we understand that continuous improvement is just a better way. You're striving towards getting better. You're always trying to make changes. You can see here on the right, you know, some stacks are higher, some stacks are taller, some stacks have a star, right? You know, what can you do to consistently get better? Can you start documenting your one-off process? Uh, can you try to understand how to make it more automated? Can you share it with your team? Can you consistently, you know, iterate on it? Uh, these are important things. Uh, in addition, it also helps reduce tribal knowledge, something very dangerous in corporations when people leave. Um, and you also want to think about how things went, whether successful or there were failures. You know, run those postmodern meetings. You know, how did this project go that you brought on this tool? Or how did this client engagement go? Or how did this delivery go? Understand your successes, understand your failures, and then grow from them together as a team. Funding. Uh, a lot of companies, obviously, you know, we need funding to, to survive, to grow. Um, how can operations help you get there? Now, operations can help you get there by ensuring that all those things that we don't talk about on a day-to-day -day basis are ready for when and if the leadership team decides that we are going to go out for funding. And what does that mean? That means back-end systems, data, business intelligence, reporting, clean books, uh, understanding of your SaaS metrics, you know, being able to understand where your clients are, you know, churn information, you know, specific product details, you know, usage details, all of this information that may not really be bubbled up on a day-to-day -day basis. Operations teams are responsible for knowing where it is, collecting it, maturing it, keeping it clean, understanding all your contractual information, all your metadata about contracts, all your insurance details, all this gory stuff that doesn't exactly help you sell anything better, faster, or stronger, but we help it be there in the company. And while that's useful, is that when you have your due diligence, you know, for funding rounds, you're going to get hundreds and hundreds of questions. When you have your books in order and you have your company clean and you have organized records, you can provide that information faster to your potential investors. They love that. They want to see that. It shows them that you're mature, that you're clean, that you're responsible, that you've done this beforehand, and it can really help to set you apart. So leaning on your operations teams to kind of build that readiness within your company uh, can allow you to handle those tasks faster and better when they are becoming a necessity. Responsibilities and documentation. And again, you know, this is a, a whirlwind tour across, you know, so many operational topics. So we're just kind of tapping on each one just a little bit. Um, documenting things is, is very key. You know, how do you do things? How do you onboard somebody? How do you onboard a client? How do you handle your SLAs? How do you handle end of life policies? How do you handle, you know, challenges or, or conflicts? Um, these should be things that the company, as you learn them and as you grow, you write them down. You know, a startup doesn't have these things on day one. No one expects you to. But every time you hit one, don't do it as a one-off walk away. The next time it comes, do it again, think from scratch. You're, you're killing time each and every time you do this. Jot it down. Again, continual improvement. It doesn't have to be great on version one. It just has to be there in a reusable asset that it's need to mature in their knowledge base, can continually iterate on. That is a huge differentiator. It will allow your team to be stronger. It will allow more people to know what's going on. 
It will allow you to, to breed trust in your actions. It will also allow you to support additional compliance obligations going forward because you're building the repository of documentation needed to have your company be mature, get the ISO, get the SOC 2, uh, provide those audit trails. Uh, and then in doing so, those lead to more sales. You know, when you sell things these days, people want to have trust in the companies. They want to know that you have those compliance obligations completed. You have those logos on your website. You have them on your product. So all these little steps eventually add up to a more successful sales cycle. So they don't seem to be related, but they're definitely related at the end of the day. Operations. Uh, I like to consider operations as, as the glue, right? We have our old friend here, Elmers, from uh, you know back in the day. I'm sure we all had a few tubes of that while we were in our younger grades. Um, you know, we are sort of working in between departments, right? We are not focused on just sales, just finance, just customer support, just strategy. We are there focused on company health. So when we're making a decision, it's not a decision saying, I want to protect my sales team. I want to protect my marketing team. I want to protect my tech team. It's, I want to protect the company. I want the company to do better. I want the company to be healthy. I want clients to be satisfied. And in doing so, we facilitate the communication between all those teams, right? We allow people to work together. We understand the differences in people's thoughts and their goals and try to get them to collaborate all for the success of the company. That's one major differentiating factor I've seen across multiple different teams. And that does allow operations to get things done sometimes because it isn't a selfish action, right? We are looking at it specifically for the company health. Alignment. I know we've talked about this uh, a little bit already, but where are you going? Where do you want to be? You know, do you have a plan? Uh, is that plan shared? You know, does all of your leadership know that plan? Or does half your leadership have one vision of the world Half your leadership have another vision. Does one country have one vision and a different country in your company have a different vision? That stuff doesn't fly, right? You have to all be you know, stacking hands, communicating, understanding where you're going. There should be a test every few months. You go to every single person in the company who makes these decisions and who's responsible for your, you know, your actions going forward saying, hey, what do you think our strategy is? Where are we going? What's our goals? What's the top three things? If you don't do it this quarter, this company is in trouble. If you get different answers from people, that's a sign that maybe your communication is not where you think it is. And that's not, you know, don't go cry, don't be sad, but just fix it, work on it. You know, realize that you need more communication. Maybe how you share things isn't working properly. Maybe people haven't picked up on the right hints. Uh, understanding how to communicate with your team, especially your leaders, stay on the same page, keep track of changes, will really drive significant change in your business. It will get people bought in and it will allow people to be more resourceful, more useful, and more powerful in how you're driving that enterprise forward. Measuring. Uh, we talk about a lot of things, right? Everyone says, oh, OKRs, KPIs. Yes, they're buzzwords. They're great. They do many wonderful things. However, think about it in specific relationship to your company. What is relevant for your company's size? Don't overly complicate things if you're just starting out, right? You can't have specific numbers if you've done one sale. Think about what's relevant for you and what helps you move the company forward and then iterate on it. Figure out how to make it better. Figure out how to adopt it as you are growing. The why. Um, why are we scared to ask why? You know, Nancy says to go do something. Why? I'm not being disrespectful. I'm not being argumentative. But why? You know, what, what are we doing this for? What is the reason for it? When we understand the reason, we can understand the questions we need to ask to make sure that we are going to be successful. We can make sure that we're bought in. We can make sure that other things need to happen are going to change and support that particular action. So to do something just to do something doesn't really help us a lot. Sometimes it's great just to pause hey, why are we doing this? So we can all be on that same page. So we can all have that same vision and work together. Um, planning. Uh, we've talked about this again. You know, think about what you're doing. Think about how you're going to execute things. You know, revisit your plans. Write them down and be prepared. This will allow you to be much more successful when you have to pivot as you know, changes in the world or in the market that you're not aware of and you have to adjust. Knowing where you are, knowing how you do things, really going to help you be able to adjust and be more resilient going forward. Um, efficiency, you know, look at this. You have these football players going on. He could have went around the guy slower. He could have jumped over the guy. Technically, it's more efficient. He jumped over. He got to the next spot he needed to go to. Operations is very similar to that. We repeat things. We reduce waste. We allow the company to operate more efficiently. And we allow people to, you know, get things done 
through their relationships with other stakeholders by knowing who they should talk to, how they should talk to them, and how they can work together. Automation. Uh, we buy lots of tools. We've said that already. You know, Think about your tools. Think about how they integrate. Think about how you can pass information from one to the other. Think about how all your data can roll up to a data dashboard, You know, your business intelligence, how you can make that change the, the operating rhythm of your company, how you can be a data-driven company. At the end of the day, all these tools do great things, but if they don't work together, they don't solve the goal of the company. So think about how you're gonna build these tools together, how you're gonna make them sing, how you're gonna have them have the same version of the truth of your data, and how you're gonna change that data into intelligence that you can use to actually drive changes in your business. And finally, our conclusion. Uh, these are what I feel is sort of the, the biggest takeaways from this you know, speed run of a, of a chat here. So define your scaling objectives clearly. Be honest with yourself, be honest with your team. Build your company with intent and focus for sustainable growth. Think about where you're going. Think about how to get there responsibly. Be balanced. You know, Don't be all positive. Don't be all negative. Also, don't be naive. Think about how you want to get there fast, but also in an accurate manner. Be holistic across departments. Don't do things in a silo. And again, continuous improvement, strategic alignment really helps set you up for success, makes for a happier team and a more profitable company. If you'd like to reach me, uh, here's my LinkedIn information, a QR code that goes to LinkedIn as well. I thank all of you for your time for being here. I hope everyone walked away with some uh, sort of learnings and feel free to reach out to me at any time. And thank you uh, very much.